Thank you so much. Are there any questions, first of all? Well, in the Bay Area, there's actually a lot of separate transit agencies, which really makes it difficult to get around. So, AC Transit is one of like 26 agencies in the Bay Area. We're the third largest behind Muni and um, um, BART, so we're the third largest. Um, so, it would be this project is under the AC Transit. So, it's, AC Transit is the sponsor. Um, well, what, we, what we're trying to do is to fix the parking problem but not break the bank in doing it. So what we're looking at is ways to use um, joint use parking. That is parking that's used for a part of the day but then there's other times of the day when it isn't used. Um, so a typical thing would be like a, this is an example, it doesn't really apply to this project, but like a, uh, a shopping center might be busy in the day, not so busy in the evening, but if you attach a movie theater, you're able to get sort of more use out of that single parking lot throughout the day. There's cases with university parking that are like a local example where they're not really used in the evening, so you can use them, maybe use them more effectively. Um, the first thing, though, the first step we do is not mitigation, but we look at ways to design the project to minimize how much parking is lost uh, right off, off the bat. So we're in the process of doing that. So um, in other cities, we've been able to get the parking loss to 15% total. I mean, we're far from that in Berkeley, but I think it shows that if you pay attention to the design, you can get the, the number that you take down to a very low level. Then you have to look to see if that tick actually causes problems, and if it does, then you replace it. So the joint use thing is one way. We would contribute funds to either build lots or contribute to garages or add parking to projects that are already maybe in the planning stages to add spaces to the um, neighborhood. And then there's also just making sure the, the right type of parking is in the right space. So we look at cross streets adjacent to commercial properties to make sure that that's either a metered space or it is a, um, a time restricted space so you're not getting all day parking where you don't want all day parking so you do a combination of these things to see if that addresses addresses the problem so we'll go to oh i'll let you go do it i'm sorry i'll let you I just wanted to ask if you could say something about traffic modeling and traffic engineering. I mean, just level of confidence that you have. I mean, right. So all of our figures on ridership and the costs and how many buses we need are based on um, traffic models. So these things are computer programs that are based on uh, the land uses of the Bay Area, projections from the Association of Bay Area Governments, and also from the individual cities. Um, those are put in, and then they're audited by various agencies, such as the Congestion Management Agency, which, which owns and manages the model, the Federal Transit Administration, which goes in deeply into sort of every aspect of that. Um, and that's, that's how we get sort of the, the ridership numbers, traffic projections, and then those in turn are analyzed for their effects on individual intersections and streets. Yeah. Uh, just a clarification, the existing Van Hool buses will be used for the Bus River Transit line, right? Oh yeah, to start, but we're, we're deliberately not designing it around a particular bus make. We're making the design pretty much generic for the floor length and the length of the bus, so that whatever bus comes along or whatever propulsion systems are um, the most environmentally or economically advantageous, we can just do that. So. It's a pretty much a generic design uh, of, of it. So, but initially, we'd use the buses that we have. Okay. Yeah, that's 
Oh, let's ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have a question over here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are the traffic lanes that you are proposing taking now a part of the public commons? They're, they're uh, owned by each city, that's right. So they are part of the public commons now? Yeah. Okay. They remain that too, if they're dedicated to bus use. So their designation changes, but the, the fact they're still a public public space. Well, no, you wouldn't have access from, from the public for those lanes, right? Isn't that what you're saying? The public would not be able to enter those lanes. No, cars wouldn't, but right. public on the bus. So. Certain, certain members of the public, just to clarify. Right, bus drivers. So, and emergency vehicles. If anybody has um, any follow-up questions or would like to make comments, we'll actually have an opportunity for that. Um, but. Right now, we have um, another speaker. Thank you once again, Jim. Sure, you're welcome. Um, so we'll definitely be hearing from all these speakers again. Um, before I introduce the next speaker, i just like to introduce, I, I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to do this earlier, but I'd like to introduce, first of all, Wyatt Trevor Summers from the Berkeley Planning Commission. And I have to tell you that this idea was basically for a brainchild. And it's been <laughs> um, recruiting staff and faculty members to attend today. Um, we're very excited to work with her. We, we have another planning commissioner, too, um, the former chair of the planning commission, in fact, um, David. And I'd also like to introduce two very important people um, in the UC Berkeley community for dealing with capital planning, that's Jennifer McDougall and Emily Martinson. Thank you so much for coming. Um, 